Hello everyone. Today we are going to discuss the short story titled Amnesty written by Nadine Godimer. Nadine Godimer, the first South African writer to win the Nobel Prize in Literature, was born in Springs, a rough mining town near Johannesburg in 1923. She published her first short story at the age of 15. Her first novel, Lying Days, was published in 1953. and was followed by 12 more godimer died in her sleep at her home in 2014 with numerous prestigious awards to her credit her birth and death bracket the establishment and eventual demise of apartheid the most brutal and dehumanizing period of south africa's history in an interview in 1990 she said I would have been a writer anywhere but in my country writing meant confronting racism her voice is unique forged by a lifelong engagement with the corrosive effects of a political and economic system founded on inequality and segregation called apartheid she claimed that a quarter to be a writer is to enter public life unquote a principle to which her career as a writer and an activist bears eloquent testimony godimer observed no boundary between the ethics of living in the aesthetics of writing which is why the apartheid censorship board banned several of her novels godimer was a woman of great personal integrity and political commitment She joined the anti-apartheid movement in the early 1960s and she helped edit Nelson Mandela's famous speech I am prepared to die in 1962. She used her prominence as a writer to campaign against apartheid joining Mandela's African National Congress. Her writing and politics were intimately connected in a manner currently unfashionable for her. it was impossible to separate the two having had the first hand experience of the effects of censorship she campaigned tirelessly for the right to freedom of expression along with the pan international who took up the struggle against the ban of her books now as we live in a world where increasing numbers of writers are being silenced there is much to be learned from her political commitment and from her great ability to unfold in elegant prose how repression and violence distort the human heart well before we move into a detailed analysis of the story let's just glance over certain quick facts like the settings and characters of the story amnesty was originally published in the magazine the new yorker in 1991 and later included in the collection Jump and other stories which was selected to the anthology entitled Freedom published in 2009 by Amnesty International celebrating the universal declaration of human rights The story is narrated by a young South African woman she tells the story of her would be husband's freedom from imprisonment and her eternal wait for him to come home The story is set in an in an island presumably the Robben Island the notorious prison that once held Nelson Mandela among other political prisoners Robben Island is never specifically described in the story instead the island comes to represent the sacrifices made by the black people the dutch taking advantage of its isolated location more than 4 miles off the coast of cape town began using robben island as a prison in the late 17th century in the later half of 19th century the island was also used as a leper colony but its role as a prison for political prisoners including nelson mandela from 1961 into the 1990s is the reason for its inclusion in the story now the main characters of the story are the narrator the narrator's lover the daughter and the family members 
Now the narrator is a young black woman who has passed standard 8 which means she has a decent education. Then comes the narrator's lover, the unnamed protagonist and the potential husband of the narrator. Then their daughter, she was born while the trial was going on. She was named Inkululegu which means freedom. Then comes the other minor characters including the family members and the movement protesters. Now having said the scene let's get into the story. Godimer's stories are captivating in the literal sense of holding in thrall the reader's entire attention. This story is about a young black South African woman whose fiancé has been imprisoned for five years in Robben Island because of his political activism. The man, never named, had left their village nine years ago to work in town for a construction company. For the, for the first two years, he came home once a month for, the, for every weekend. For the Christmas, he came for two weeks with plans for their marriage. and started sending them money but soon things began to change with him she started losing contacts with him and later she learned that he had joined the union who fight for the causes of workers and for civil rights he was always good at talking and he began making speeches and organized marches in the third year she heard she heard that he was in prison During his trial their first baby was born a baby girl whom he named Inkululegu which means freedom he was sentenced to 6 years imprisonment and was sent to the island she attempted to visit him once she and his parents saved money for 2 years for that and made the journey to cape town but they could get only as far as the ferry because they had no permit as they were ignorant that they needed police permission with her mother daughter and father who work for a boyer farmer boyers are actually the land owning classes of south africa members of the uh, the dutch population settled in the late 17th century now she is destined f- uh, to wait for his return in their mud and tin hut After five years, he was released, but he had been radicalized into a member of the movement and now belongs entirely to his comrades and their nationalist activities. His daughter doesn't recognize him from the old photo she has grown up with. The narrator finds herself as distanced from this man and he, as he is no longer a family man. Now, carrying a second child, she finishes the story thinking figuratively that she is still waiting for him to come home the major theme of the story is the struggle of black south africans to challenge apartheid though the story focuses mostly on the imprisonment and eventual release of an african worker the plain spoken voice of story's narrator the woman who would have married the worker captures another dimension to the struggle against the backdrop of the social inequalities that godimer so gently but clearly presents we are given the story of a young woman whose humble ambitions are thwarted by those inequalities and her lovers innate need to confront them the power in this story is composed entirely of the words of struggling people For an analysis, let's take the incident where the narrator, is, the narrator and the parents of her fiancé travelled to Cape Town but were turned away for not having a permit when attempting to board the ferry. The saddest part was that it took them two years to earn money to fund this travel and at last they were not allowed. She was devastated with sorrow and that she knew she cannot visit him at all as it was really hard to earn money for the travel saddened by these she wrote him a letter 
illustrating their miserable situation then he wrote back such a good letter this is very important for our analysis purpose let me read he said that's what i am on the island for far away from you i'm here so one day our people will have the things they need land food the end of ignorance there was something else i could just read the word power the prison had black doubt all his letters were not just mine the prison officer read them before i could now this reveals how the prison used to, to serve as an instrument in the hands of oppressive colonial governments where individuals were subjected to close surveillance it also demonstrates that how innocent people like the narrator took the pain inflicted by the state in short the story portrayed the deep racial division that infected south africa under the apartheid it also delineated the necessity of overcoming oppressive regimes in order to gain freedom in all its manifestations through the sharp and unsentimental narrative the story also uncovered the ways in which oppressed people especially women are emotionally and physically traumatized thank you